Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my Chef Flera bone size here in the bone size zone. My banyan style Chef Flera is in a growing phase, but there is some cleanup work I can do to it. I'll also be working on my single trunk Chef Flera today. This tree was a cutting off this group of trees. I'm going to start today by repotting this tree. It's not in a very nice pot. The pot has a big crack in it. And it's just a terracotta pot. So I'm gonna try and find a really nice pot to plant the tree in. I have this nice Japanese oval pot that would probably suit this tree quite well. But I'm thinking maybe one of my 3D printed pots would look even better. So let's head in the house and have a look. I'm in the plant room now with all my 3D printed pots. The plant room is totally empty right now, except for my one little tree. I have three pots here that I think would suit the tree nicely. I have a shallow tray type pot. I have a Vietnam style pot. And I have my pot with the curved sides, sort of a Japanese style pot. So I'll have to decide which one of the three to use with this tree. The first step to picking a pot is getting the front of my tree so I can get an idea of what the final composition will look like. I'll rotate the tree around so you can see all the angles. So here I go. I'm liking this as the front view. The trunk comes forward towards the viewer. The aerial root and the branch also look nice in this view. So this is the view. I'm going to try out my pots now and see which one looks the best. Here's a look at the first pot, the one with the curved sides. It looks pretty good. I like the size of it and I like the length of it. Let's try some other ones. Here's a look at pot number two. It looks good also. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough decision. Let's try the last pot. Here's a look at the last pot, the Vietnam style pot. And I think this pot suits it the best. It uh, gives it a tropical feel. It's a nice deep pot. It's got some decoration on it. I think uh, this is going to be my choice. I also printed up a display stand for this pot to look like a cement style table. And I can plant some ground cover on the bottom of it and the tree in the top. It's time to get out the paint and the glue and get this all put together. I'm going to paint this table before I put it together so I can get underneath it and that. It'll make it a lot easier. So I've got to put gray primer on the pot, the stand, and the tabletop. I've got a nice wide brush, so here I go. Make sure I get the edges here. I'll have to just do the top of the table and then I'll flip it over and do the underside. I've got my primer on the pot and the stand, so I'll put them outside in the sun to dry. As the paint dries on the 3D printed pot, I'll start working on the Banyan style Schifflera planting. This tree was in the greenhouse, and when I rotated around here, I noticed the soil's a little dry on the back side. It's hard to get in and water this. Um, I try misting it, and I water from overhead, and it trickles down, but it didn't get a really thorough soaking here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give the tree a good watering. I'm going to water from above, and then I'll see how the water runs down the leaves and the trunks into the soil. So here I go. I'm just watering the overall canopy.
Hopefully it looks like a rainforest in there. Okay. It looks like the overhead watering has done a good job of soaking the soil. So I think I was probably just misting too much and not watering enough overhead. As with most of my trees, this tree is in a growing phase for the entire summer. I let them grow to gain vigor and health, thicken the trunks up, and then in fall I prune them back down and bring them inside for the winter. Even though this tree is in a growing phase, there's still a few things you can do to it to make sure it grows nice and healthy over the summer. I've already done the first thing you should check, and that's proper watering. Making sure that you're soaking all parts of the soil in your pot. Sometimes when your trees are crowded on the bench, it's hard to get behind them and water properly. The second item you should check on your tree is to inspect it thoroughly and make sure there's no insects, scale insects or aphids, anything that you need to take care of. Next you want to check if your tree's in the right location making sure it's not getting too much sun or too little sun. Your leaves should be a nice healthy green color. If they're turning yellow, it may be getting too much sun. For me, summer is all about growing your trees. My tropical trees only get outside for four months of the year, so when they do get outside, I let them grow. This tree passed all the tests. It's well watered, it's free of bugs, and it's growing really nicely. There is one thing I want to correct on it, and there's an aerial root in here coming off the main trunk that I want to remove. It's kind of coming sideways. If it were hanging straight down, it would look good, but I want to get rid of that one root. There's a close-up of the root, so I'll try and get in there and cut that off. It's not going to be easy. I may have to come from above, I think. Yeah. Okay, here I go. It's going down into the soil, so I've got to remove it just by cutting it off here. Just like that. I haven't done much actual work on the Schefflera clump, but I did give it a good inspection, a good watering, and I did a little bit of correction work. So I'll put it back in the greenhouse and just let it grow, and let's get back to the 3D printed bonsai pot. The pot dried really quickly in the sun. I'm going to put the black wash on the pot now. This will uh, make the black paint flow in all the creases. I'll make a mixture of flat black and thinners just to thin it down so it flows really nicely. There's my black. So I'll put a bit of black onto my palette here. And then I'll get some thinner and add to that. That looks like a good thickness. And then I'll paint it on my pot. So here I go. Let's try it out. That's looking pretty good. You don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. I've got the wash on the pot now. You can see it's bringing out the details. So I'll put it outside to dry and then we'll come back in and I'll put some cement type texture on the pot. Let's get the sponge out now and start dabbing on our concrete texture. I'll be starting with a dark concrete texture. So I'm mixing some gray paint with some black paint and that'll be my base color that I sponge onto the pot. That looks pretty good there. So I'll get my sponge, dab it in, and then I'll dry it off on a piece of paper here until it's just barely there. There, I think the sponge is dry enough. I'll apply this texture to the pot now. Okay, so here I go. So this is like the shadow, so I'm going to do it more on the underside of everything. I 
I've got the dark concrete texture and stains on the pot, so I'll let that dry, and then I'll come back with my light sponge texture. My dark colored sponge texture is dry, so now I'm gonna add my light gray. So I'll get my sponge and dip it in this mixture of gray and white paint. And dab it around until I get it just sort of a dry sponge. And then we'll go on and start adding texture to the pot. You can see how it kind of brings out the detail. Let's keep going around. I've got the light coat of concrete texture on now. So next is my weathering and staining. I haven't uh, weathered the base yet, but that'll come. I'm just gonna finish the pot first. For my staining, I'm gonna start with a olive drab kind of streaking effect. And I'll thin that with some thinners. And it'll look like moss and algae collected on the concrete. And it tones down the light gray a bit. Kind of gives it a more of a weathered appearance. I've added my weathering and it's starting to look like an old concrete pot. Hi everyone. It's the next day now. I've been doing some work on the pot and the stand. Getting it painted up and weathered. Let's go in and have a look. Here's the tabletop. It's painted up and weathered to look like concrete. It's got stains and algae and yeah, it fits in with the pot nicely. I've done some touch up work to the pot just to make it look more realistic. You know, adding a bit more green staining and some more highlights. Yeah, just a bit of refinement. I've got most of the work done on the columns. I still have to add my green algae, but most of the shading and all that is done. I may do a few touch-ups, but here's what it looks like with the tabletop on. So that'll get glued on top of here in the end. There's a different angle with the tabletop on. I'll put the pot on top now and we'll see what it looks like all together. There's a look at the pot on the stand. I'm going to add a wooden base underneath this whole assembly. I'll show you that. Here's a shot of the pot, the display stand, and the wooden base. So I'll be screwing the plastic part onto the wooden base for the final assembly. I still have to paint my black edges around this uh, the plastic base. I'm getting closer to planting the tree. I'll finish off all the details and then we'll come back and see how it all looks. I've got all the details finished. Let's go in and have a look. Here's a look at the pot and the stand. I'm gonna start by planting the tree and then I'll plant the ground cover underneath. I'll start the repotting process by getting the pot ready, cutting some screening for the bottom. I'm just gonna use one piece. This pot has lots of drainage holes in it. So I think the one piece screen will just be the easiest, just like that. I'll put down a base layer of soil I've left the tree quite dry, so it'll be easier to repot, to rake away the old soil. So I'm lifting it out now. There we go. It's my drainage screen. And now I can start raking the roots. I'm just gently combing the roots out starting at the center of the tree and raking it outwards, trying to keep all those nice radial roots intact. Schaeffleras really like to grow roots. When conditions are right, they'll just grow roots all over, aerial roots, roots in the soil. They're a really good tree for indoors too. So because the soil is quite dry, it's just crumbling off really nicely from the roots. It makes repotting quite easy. And Schaeffleris, they can handle a bit of dryness. They have very waxy leaves and the roots are quite tough. Most of the soil is removed now. 
So the next step, I'll give the roots a wash and then we'll go in and start pruning. The roots are washed and you can see there's a lot of radial roots on it, but there's also a lot that, you know, can be fixed or corrected. For instance, this one, it starts out nice and radial. It divides into two. I must have cut it off there at one time and it's grown out here and then it grows up and kind of out of the soil. So that will be the first one I'm going to correct. I'm just going to prune it off with a horizontal cut close to the old root right there. So that gets rid of that. This is our aerial root here. So I'll reposition that when I plant it. There's a root here that's it's nice and radial, but it's a little low in the root base. It, uh, it could be pruned off a little shorter to get some ramification closer to the trunk. So I'm going to prune it off here. There's lots of fine root hairs on it, so there's no problems with it continuing to grow. There's a root here that's growing up out of the soil, so I want to prune that off. Just the part that's sticking up anyway, like that. There's a root behind here that starts off nice and radial and then it curves around and crosses a whole bunch of roots. So I'll cut that part of it off that curves and I'll keep the straight section. Some of these roots I can reposition as I'm repotting. I'm gonna cut this one off here. It's going a bad direction. I'm going to prune this one off. It's curving in a strange direction here, so I'll prune it off shorter. And then I'm going to go underneath and prune off anything growing straight down, like that one. There's one here I can prune off just to get it flatter on the bottom. I'm going to shorten this one too. This one root is very vigorous here, so I'm going to take a bit of the vigor out so the others can catch up. So I'm going to shorten some of the roots coming off of it. There's one growing down here I can take off. That one there. Actually, I'm gonna take that whole piece off underneath here. Like that. I'll get a little flatter on the bottom. I'm gonna try and get a little more even right here. There we go. That sits nice and flat now. That's really good. Okay, let's get our pot now and try it out. I'm going to wet the base layer of soil just so it uh, stays in place while I'm positioning the tree and trying out the root system, see how it fits in the pot. Now let's see how the tree fits. It's pretty good. There's a few roots that are interfering that are a little tight to the pot. I might have to trim some of the front roots back a bit and some of the rear ones. So I'm just pruning some of these roots at the back a little shorter. Like that. And that fits in nicely now. Here's an overhead view of the tree so you can see how much room it has in the pot. Lots of room to grow. I'll try and position this aerial root as straight as I can. And I'm going to check the height of the tree in the pot also. I'm looking at the height of the tree in the pot and I think it's a little low. You can just start to see the base of the tree, but I could expose those roots just a little bit more. So I'll bring it up a bit. I'll want the tree offset in the pot too. So I'm going to put a mound of soil off the center like that. And I'll position the tree and then I'll kind of wiggle it down to get the right height. Maybe somewhere there. I've got to rotate the tree a little more. More like 
like about there, I think. Let me have a look at that. That's not too bad. I think I've got to tilt the tree a bit more. I think that would look better. Right there. Rotate it a bit. I don't like the way you can't see the separation between the two branches there. That's looking good. I'm liking this. Now, let's see what I can do about this aerial root. I do want to hang it vertical if possible. So maybe somewhere there. So when I'm filling it in with soil, I'll hold it in place and hopefully it'll stay there. Maybe I should put a small stone there to hold it in place. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll put this stone... I'll position the root. Sort of like that. And then I'll put the stone on top to hold it in place. There. And that holds it. Okay. I'm going to take a final look at it. I think all is looking good, so I'm going to fill it in with soil now. So that stone that's holding the aerial root in place, it'll just get buried and the next repotting, I can remove it. Next, I'll get the soil worked into the roots. Making sure there's no air pockets and the tree is nice and stable in the pot. I think the roots are gonna grow really well in this new soil. I don't think the old soil had any perlite in it. I think it was just turfus and maybe some organic matter. So I think in this mixture, the roots are just gonna grow like crazy. So I'll add just a little more soil here and there. A little low over here. And then I'll get my spoon and level it all out. This aerial root, as it gets older, it will straighten out as it grows. And it'll also get its own root system at the base. So when it does, when it gets a bit of a root system, I can cut it off shorter so it's not so long in the pot and start developing a radial root base around the aerial root. And that looks really cool when you do that. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna give it a watering. Here I go. Okay, the next step is to plant some moss. So I'm going to start at the edges here. Just wet the moss and press it down into the soil. Like that. I'm just piecing the moss together like a jigsaw puzzle. You just got to make sure it's making good contact with the soil. I finished applying the moss, so now I'm just going to go in and clean it up, picking out any chunks of perlite. And then I'll make sure all my moss is pressed down nicely into the soil. That seems really good. There's a look at the tree on the stand now. The last thing I need to do is to put my ground cover underneath the stand. I've done moss before. I've done sand. So I think I'll try stones and turfus this time. I'll just spoon the turfus down below here. I'll see what it looks like. If I don't like it, I can always remove it. So it should look pretty natural, like a gravel pathway. Here's the planting now with the turfus down below. It's looking quite miniature, I think. I, uh, I'm happy with the result.
I think it'll be really interesting following this tree in the future to see if I can get a single trunk Schifflera to look nice and lush and tropical. It's time now for today's update. Today's update is my American elms that I dug up from the front garden. Last year, the leaf size stayed really small on them. It, it was almost this size. But this year, they're growing nice and big, which means I can repot the tree this coming spring. Today, I'll just give them a good watering. And there's some fertilizer mixed in with this water. And then I'll get them back on the bench. I'm really looking forward to developing the root base further this next spring. And hopefully someday they'll make a nice bonsai tree. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me here in the Bonsai Zone.